Hello everyone, three and a half years ago I built my very first custom FPV drone frame which I dubbed the tubular quad because it had tubes for arms instead of flat carbon plate for arms like you normally see. So three and a half years later I am announcing the version 6 of this design which will be the best version yet and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys the CAD models and talking about all the little tweaks and changes I've made for this version. So this may be a bit of a boring video for some people, however I really wanted to document all the little changes I've made and show you guys kind of how I think when I am designing these quads. Now if you haven't heard of the tubular quad before, there is a link to the tubular quad playlist down in the description below. I recommend at least watching the version 5 videos so that you are up to speed with the most recent design up until now. Now before we take a look at the version 6, let's talk about how the version 5 performed briefly. So the biggest change with the version 5 was the addition of the fifth standoff between the camera and the stack. And the point of this was to prevent the top plate from smashing into the stack screws and to distribute the load on the bottom plate because the previous version broke right here on the bottom plate um, just from impacts to the front of the frame. So I'm pleased to report that this frame is definitely more durable than the last one. It has seen more concrete and pavement than any other tubular quad and it is still completely functional. However, there still are a few things that could be improved. The bottom plate is starting to fail. This side is starting to crack. It has not gone all the way through. The other side is fine but still I think this could be designed stronger while still not adding much weight. Also, the fifth standoff, although it has solved a lot of problems, it has also introduced a problem where in a front end crash, if you hit the top plate, um, all the standoffs bend backwards, which is totally normal, but because of the placement of the fifth standoff, it can hit the connector on the ESC and kill your ESC, which I did to the indestructible Hobbywing version three ESC and part of that has to do with that ESC goes beyond the bounds of the 30 by 30 mounting pattern but I do want to address this in the latest version. Now I did switch to a ESC that stays within the normal 30 by 30 like square of the PCB and it hasn't been a problem. Now the last issue that I've started to notice is that the motor mounts are starting to delaminate However, I am not going to bother addressing this in the version 6 because this thing has withstood so many crashes and the motor mounts have not failed. This thing is still completely flyable, so I think that is good enough. I don't want to go super beefy with the motor mounts and add too much weight. However, if you are building this yourself, and the plans will be available, um, you can feel free to up the thickness of the motor mounts, especially if you are building a heavier quad. So overall the tubular quad version 5 has performed very well. It's still in fully working condition which usually is not the case when I go design a new frame. Usually I design a new frame because the previous version has broken. So I'm really happy about how this has performed. However we're going to see right now all of the improvements and changes to the version 6. All right so we are going to start with the bottom plate because this is kind of going to show a lot of the changes that are happening with the version 6 all in one place. So first up, the inner arm mounting screws slash stack screws. Yes, I use the same screws for the arms in the stack to save weight. These screw holes are further inwards and that is because I'm switching to a 20 by 20 main stack. And the reason why I'm doing this is to hopefully save some weight with the boards. However, this also is going to save weight with the frame because it allows the outer parts of the frame that kind of stick out here to be further in than they were on the version 5. The holes themselves for the arms are actually slightly further apart, but the amount that the carbon protrudes actually moves in quite a bit, which saves weight. The reason why I have this much space between the holes is because the further the holes are apart, the less the forces are on the holes, which means less stress on the arms and less likelihood of breaking the arms. So back in the version three, I did break an arm because the holes weren't that far apart. In the version six, the holes are even further apart than before, which will make up for the fact that the arms are even closer to the middle of the quad. 
so it's probably going to come out as a wash in terms of arm strength, but that is fine because the arms have been plenty strong in the version 4 and version 5. You will also notice at the rear we have another 20 by 20 mounting pattern. Now these are 2 millimeter holes instead of 3 millimeter holes in the center stack. So the main reason that they're 2 millimeter holes is that I actually designed this to fit the Cadix Vista because people wanted digital support. So there you go. I won't be running digital because I'm poor, but if you want to run digital, there is the functionality there. And of course you can put whatever other 20 by 20 boards you want in the back, such as a video transmitter. So that is going to make the build a lot easier because this fuselage is very short because the battery goes on toilet tank style to reduce the moment of inertia. Other changes are that the fifth standoff has moved back a few millimeters. And there are a couple reasons for this. First, it helps more evenly support the battery and GoPro being more centralized. Also, it allows me to maintain the strip of carbon between these two front arm mounting holes, um, which makes this bottom plate very strong, having those carbon fibers going a straight shot between the two holes. Now, a problem that was starting to occur on the version 5 that you saw was that the bottom plate was starting to crack in this area here. So you can see I'm using these kind of weird trapezoidal cutouts, which I have never seen before on a FPV frame. However, I think this actually makes a lot of sense because when you apply a vertical load to the ends of this bottom plate, the moment that the bottom plate experiences actually increases as you move towards the center. So in order to reduce stress, you actually need to increase the thickness of the carbon here to make the stress more even. Yes, you do want a fair amount of carbon in the front and back just to absorb impacts and deal with that. However, I never had problems with like this area here breaking, so I just kept that the same, but then made the parts where it is clearly failing thicker. In addition, I made the radii on the outside and on the cutouts slightly larger because anytime you have a sharp turn or just a angle, um, it causes a big stress concentration. So by making that curve larger and smoother, that should also reduce the stress concentrations in this area that we know is more prone to failing. Another thing to mention about the bottom plate is that it used to taper a little bit in the front and back and it was wider in the middle section. So I just got rid of that because the armholes are more inwards. So it's not really needed and it also saves weight and makes manufacturing this thing by hand a little bit easier, just having more straight lines to work with. And the only last thing to note is because of the 20 by 20 mounting pattern in the back, I did have to get rid of one triangular cutout that I had before. So I am, you know, probably gaining 0.2 grams there. So for those of you who wanted digital, you're welcome. I did it for you. Moving on to the mid plate, this is just the same arm mounting pattern as on the bottom plate. The holes here are 4.22 millimeters to fit the press nuts, which you see on most other carbon frames that have the arm sandwich. Now this whole overall X shape is a little bit smaller because the holes are moved further inwards, saving a little bit of weight. And I also made the kind of arms of the X slightly narrower by about a millimeter because I have had no indications of this mid plate failing in the previous two versions. So I decided it's probably plenty strong enough. So let's take a little bit of weight out of it and see what happens. So a little bit of an experiment here to see if this survives. Onto the top plate, obviously the fifth standoff hole is also a few millimeters back, just like the bottom plate. I did not bother with the trapezoidal cutout here because the top plate did not show any signs of beginning to fail and generally the top plate just doesn't undergo as much stress as the bottom plate. The top plate also has gotten rid of the taper in the front and the back so this is just one nice straight line easy to cut out and file by hand which is going to make building this a little bit easier. And I also moved this rear battery strap hole a couple millimeters forward because that's just going to fit the batteries I'm using right now slightly better. And that also allows me to add this 
cut out in the back to make more room for the FPV antenna, keep it slightly further away from the props. However, if you want more protection for the Cadex Vista in the back, you can just leave that a straight line. On to the arms. These are very similar to the version 5. The only thing that's changed is the armholes are just slightly further apart to match the new mounting pattern for them. And they are slightly longer to account for the fact that the arms are mounted slightly further inwards on the fuselage. However, the motors will end up being slightly further in on the quad because I think I can get away with it. So the added length to the arms uh, is not enough to overcome how much they've moved inwards in the fuselage. Other than that, it's same old, same old. There's the two millimeter section where the holes are in the middle, one millimeter thickness everywhere else. And the cutout for the motor wire pass through at the end of the arms is exactly the same as before. Moving on to the motor mounts, I have not touched these at all. They are exactly the same as with the version five. So it is the 16 millimeter mounting pattern. Yes, I only use two screws per motor. If I were to drill four holes, I would have to drill two of them through the arms, which would add stress concentrations and would probably cause the arms to break where those holes are. And there are these kind of tabs on the ends where you wrap carbon toe around both the tabs and the arm and you soak it with epoxy laminating resin to give a super strong joint between these motor mounts and the arms. This is probably the hardest part of designing a quad with tubular arms is figuring out how to get that flat place to mount the motors. And these have worked very well for the past, I think three versions now. So here is the frame with all the parts assembled. As you can see, I use 35 millimeter standoffs, which you never see these days. However, because of the thickness of the tubes, it still gives the quad that slam stance where the props are basically in line with the top plate and it gives it really favorable CG location. This thing comes out with the CG right in line with the props every single time I've built it with these 35 millimeter standoffs. So that's fantastic. And a side benefit of that is that you have a lot of room in the front and the back in terms of height to fit um, a full size FPV camera if you want, which no one really runs these days anyways, um, or you know the 20 by 20 stacks in the back, video transmitters, receivers, whatever. There's a lot of room in this fuselage given how short it is. However, in the middle, because you have the arms and the mid plate and all that stuff, you can only really fit two boards realistically on top of each other, which is kind of the norm these days anyways. Now on this other assembly, I have all of the goodies put on here. So I'll talk about those briefly. We have the arm bumpers on the ends of the arms. I typically am against arm bumpers, but because the arms are only one millimeter thick at the ends, the arm bumpers save the carbon from getting chewed up pretty quickly. I also have these super lightweight motor soft mounts. These exactly match the hyper light naked bottoms on their motors and it probably matches any modern naked bottom motor pretty closely. It's a 16 by 16 mounting pattern. So those come with the plans for free. I also have this custom GoPro mount that fits on the three standoff screw locations. So this has just been slightly adjusted from the previous version to move that third hole back slightly. And I also added a speed hole in the middle to save a little bit of weight. Moving that screw hole back also allowed this member right here of the GoPro mount to be slightly longer, which may or may not help with the vibration isolation of the GoPro. In the middle, you can see this is just an envelope for the Infinity 200. ESC that I'm going to be using. Um, it's very rectangular and sticks way out. So I think I'm going to have to mount it sideways so that the fifth standoff doesn't ram into it in a crash, uh, which is fine. If you're using a normal 20 by 20 that actually fits within the confines of the 20 by 20 square, then you shouldn't have any problems with the standoff smacking anything. And lastly, in the back, I have this random model of the Cadex Vista that I found. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but it has a little bit of room for the wires to come out 
and the bottom plate sticks out just past that rearmost portion. If you're worried about this getting hit, you can also omit the cutout in the top plate to give a little more protection. The only thing about this, at least in this model, which I'm not sure if it's accurate, is that this screw hits the mid plate. However, you can just file down the mid plate until there is clearance for this, and it's probably not gonna have much impact on the strength of the frame. So that is it. This is the design of the tubular quad V6. In the next video, we will be building this thing. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you even learned something from it. If you did, please give the video a like. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the design and maybe changes that you have in mind for the next version. If you are not subscribed to the channel already, I really would appreciate if you did hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And if you want to go the extra mile to support me, you can also throw me a couple bucks on Patreon. And lastly, if you can't get enough of me here on YouTube, I also have an Instagram page, timmy.r.c. Thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.